So on your machine, okay, you have what's called the door piece, and the door is the top part that opens. So I want you to put your finger just in the corner here, and then I want you just to lift up your door. Excellent. I like to see that you're working together. Good. Now, if you look in the inside of your door, okay, you're going to start to see some of the different parts in the inside of the machine. So the first thing that I want you to um, put your finger on is this pin right here. Gently wiggle it up and down. Now, on your machine overview sheet, I want you to, beside um, number seven, Number seven, write spool pin. Number seven is spool pin. Now, you should all have what's called a spool stopper or spool holder, and it looks like this. So just slide this little piece off of your spool pin and hold it up in the air for me. Spool pin or spool stopper. Excellent. So this particular piece on your diagram is number eight. So beside number eight, I want you to write spool stopper or spool holder. Once you've written that down, let's slide the spool stopper back onto your spool pin so you don't lose it. Excellent. The next piece that I want you to put your finger on um, is also underneath the door here, and it's the bobbin winder. It's the little knob on the end of your machine. Okay, and what I want you to do when you put your finger on it, I want you to Move it one way, excellent, everyone's bobbin winder works, freeze, perfect. Now I want to, everyone to double check when you're looking at your bobbin winder, I want you to leave it positioned to the left. So push it back closest to the spool pin, that's where it should stay. Back on your worksheet, bobbin winder is number five in your diagram. So beside number five, write bobbin winder. The next piece that I want you um, to test out um, if everyone could put their right hand on the hand wheel, the hand wheel is the large wheel on the side. Excellent. Now I want you to turn the wheel towards you. Towards you. What do you notice when the wheel is turned towards you, Ethan? The needle goes down and up. Perfect. The needle is going down and up as you turn your hand wheel. Okay, so I want you to stop and make sure your hand, your sorry, your needle is right back at the very top. Yes, Siobhan. Um, my needle's not moving. Your needle's not moving. Great. We'll come to that in just a moment. Excellent. Your machine is not broken. Do not worry. Let's write down beside number four, hand wheel. Number four on your diagram is hand wheel. Now, number three on your diagram is the stop motion knob, and the stop motion knob is the inside, is inside your hand wheel. So what I want everyone to do is to put your right hand on the hand wheel, just hold the hand wheel in place, and then I want you to take your left hand, reach across, and grab the mini wheel inside the hand wheel. This is called the stop motion knob. Once you have your hand on it, I want you to hold tight the hand wheel, and turn the stop motion knob towards you. Ah, good, you hear the click? Okay, if some of your machines were not working, that's because the stop motion knob was probably engaged. The stop motion knob, when I show you guys how to wind a bobbin, how to put thread on the bobbin, you will need to use this uh, function. 
So it stops the needle from moving up and down. So if you turned your hand wheel and your hand wheel wasn't moving up and down, that's because your stop motion knob was engaged to prevent it from moving up and down. So keeping your uh, right hand on the hand wheel, I want you to, with your left hand, turn the stop motion knob back away from you. Once you've done that, turn your hand wheel towards you, double check that the needle goes all the way up and all the way back down. Always turning it towards you. You are the best. Remember that. You are the best. Okay, so stop when your needle is fully up. On your diagram now, please, for number three, write down stop motion knob. Number three. Stop motion knob. All right, the next piece that I want you to um, take note of is the hand wheel again so let's place our hand back onto the hand wheel now when you turn the hand wheel you're going to see this silver piece which is right about here so turn the hand wheel towards you again and watch that silver piece Lizzie do you see what's happening to that silver piece as you turn the hand wheel towards you it goes down the background. good it comes all the way down and all the way back up that little silver piece is a very important piece, and it's called the thread take-up lever. Thread take-up lever. On your diagram, that's number nine. Thread take-up lever. Yes, take-up. That's number nine. This one's really important. Sometimes if you have problems with your machine, I will say check to make sure the thread is in the thread take-up lever, and this is where you're going to look. Okay? All right, coming down, I want you to um, take note as to what is going on down here. So down here, um, we have already determined that we have the needle that goes up and down when you turn your hand wheel towards you. Okay? So you know where the needle is there. Um, the other thing that I want you to know is number 17. On your diagram, number 17 is called the needle clamp. And the needle clamp, if you can just put your finger on it, do not turn it, just put your finger on it so I know that you know where it is. The needle clamp is the little black knob that sort of sticks out here. Okay, this is your needle clamp. If you break a needle, this is what I use to take your needle in and out. Also, if your needle's a little bit wiggly, you can tighten this by turning it towards the back of the machine, and the needle should be tight in your machine. So this is number 17, needle clamp. All right, drawing your eyes down to the bottom of the machine here, um, there's a silver piece here, and in between the cracks of the silver piece, you're going to see a part that's kind of rough. You can run your finger under it because your machine's not on. Do you feel that roughness right under there? That piece is called the feed dogs. So if you turn your hand wheel, some of you can't find it, and that's because your feed dogs are down. Turn your hand wheel towards you and look underneath your machine here, and you're going to see... Don't keep your finger under there though, right? Because your needle's going up and down. You're going to see the feed dogs move back and forth. The little silver pieces that are bumpy. Do you see them coming up and down? The feed dogs are what pull your fabric through the machine. So you don't need to push or pull. The machine does that for you. On your diagram, um, there is no feed dog section. I want you just to add a line from your diagram and then write feed dogs. So you just add your own line. Yes, feed dogs. Like you're going to go and feed your dog. Feed dog. Kind of a funny name. The next thing that I want you to note is right on the side of your machine here. And this little silver thing is for cutting thread. So often, um, if you are stitching, 
and you finish, and you're like, oh, I don't have scissors around. I need to snip my thread. If you put thread behind the... thread cutter like so okay you hold it up you put it behind there and you pull it and it will actually cut your thread for you and I'll show you that again when we um, are using thread on the machine so the thread cutter is number 12 on your diagram thread cutter number 12 The next important piece that you need to know is your presser foot. And your presser foot is the little uh, piece of the bottom that sort of wiggles up and down just gently if you touch it. And the little foot here is what holds down your fabric while you are sewing.